Hi, my name is Joel Compton, and I am the English for Academic Purposes Coordinator, and I am a fourth-year veteran here at Meth University. John asked me to talk to you all about how we plan our class, how we take the learning outcomes and put them into the material that we are going to teach to our students. And so I just want to walk through that with you very quickly here. And uh, I'm really happy for this opportunity. And I'm encouraged that um, you are thinking through these things and trying to use the best practices that uh, that teachers have discovered in uh, planning your classes and in training to be a teacher. Okay, so if we could, let's move over to Blackboard and uh, let me show you um, what we have done in terms of taking learning outcomes and putting them into class activities. So our learning outcomes are in our syllabus. Uh, we have our class description and then right there at the very front is our uh, learning outcomes. Okay, upon successful successful completion of the course the learner is expected to be able to do these nine things all right so I won't read them all for you but let's focus on for example number four paraphrase summarize and synthesize written academic sources so one of the things that we want our students to be able to do concluding um, with their presentation and uh, their at the end of the semester is to take a source from the internet or from the library and condense that source into its main ideas and then take multiple sources and look for common themes or differences to compare and contrast and so um, that is as I just said uh, finally uh, shown to be whether or not the students have been able to understand and, and can do that in our presentation. So, but way before that, we start them with just basic um, level summarizing, paraphrasing, and synthesizing. So let me show you that if I could, because I think it's important that you understand that staging is very important. Okay, and when I say staging, I mean taking a desired outcome and breaking it into its component parts so that you don't try to, as we say, bite off more than you can chew. So unit one, creativity versus originality. We have um, one lesson on uh, note taking you see here, which is this is the foundation for being able to paraphrase well. We have one on plagiarism, again, and that's uh, connected to the fact that once you take a source, obviously you need to identify the authors of that source since it's not your work, it's not your ideas. And so let's look at this paraphrasing lesson here, okay? So we have a pre-class quiz where uh, Latasha and Kate are talking about paraphrasing. Um, it's, it's a cute little video um, about, you know, two friends who are, Kind of making fun of another person and one of them keeps repeating the same thing that the other person said and and then Kate finally says why are you always copying her you know and so it turns out that she doesn't know how to paraphrase thanks for joining us yeah, it's good to see you again yeah unfortunately yes two of my good friends came up to me recently I was working on homework in a cafe mm -hmm. They started saying really rude words to me. It should have hurt my feelings, but all I could focus on was why one of them was copying all the other's words. You know, so she wasn't using any of her own words, not a single one. So I told her something really important. Well, let's take a look. What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Oh, these colors are so drab. Like, so drab. Um, who bought them for you? Who does your shopping? Your mother? <laughs> who does your shopping? Your mother? Wait, wait, wait. Why aren't you copying her words? Can't you use your own words? You know, there's this thing called paraphrasing. Huh? Yeah, instead of copying someone's words, you say the same but using different words. So instead of saying, who bought your clothes? You can say, did you buy it for yourself, or did anybody else buy it for you? She has a very good point. Hmm. Why are you copying everything I say? 
I don't know. Um, but forget about her blatant attempts at plagiarism. And exactly what are you doing here? Doing your homework? Like a goody-goody girl? All by yourself? Aww. So what are you, a teacher's pet? Just sitting here doing your homework all by yourself on a Saturday? Good paraphrase. Question? Wow, you sure taught her a good lesson. Paraphrasing is critical. Yeah. And I couldn't stand for one of my friends to look so silly, you know, just copying the other's words. Definitely. Kate, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experiences. You're welcome. See you again on Istanbul tonight. All right, so after the students watch the pre-class video, they have an opportunity to take a quiz over that material. And so in this particular quiz, we have, um, let's see, about four or five questions. Um, and then they take it, they're able to see their answers that they got correct, but not the ones that they that they did not get correct, okay? And so that's because we want them to go back and watch the video again or try the test again and uh, get, you know, not be able to just um, go back and choose the correct answer after seeing what the incorrect ones were. So that's how we work that particular part of this class. The class notes that we have uh, for that, and, and we keep all of our notes in Google Docs. It's a convenient place for them, for all the teachers to access, access them easily. Uh, I will be looking at the master teacher's guide here. So we're gonna skip down uh, to unit one, lesson four, the paraphrasing unit, if we can just go down there. And what I want you to see is that throughout this lesson, we are helping our students to understand the basic concepts of, of how to paraphrase and, and what paraphrasing is. And so we don't leave, we try not to leave anything to chance, right? We don't want to leave anything to chance because our students need to know how to go from step A to step B without any kind of large leaps. Okay, so you see we give them help. Here is our proposed lesson. Again, they will be able to understand this is a lesson outcome. So we have, you know, just just quickly, let me show you again. We have um, class outcomes, you know, for the entire class, and then we have individual lesson outcomes. Okay, so this one, these ones are it, the students will be able to understand and paraphrase sentences in short paragraphs. They'll be able to develop under paraphrasing skills using different techniques. Okay, and so one of the techniques that we help them with is using synonyms and antonyms, and so we give them sheets where they have to come up with different antonyms or synonyms for words. Then we use those words, uh, those same words in a paragraph that they have to, uh, that they have to paraphrase. And then we get them to do a little funner, a little more fun activity um, where they pass around a paper where they've paraphrased one thing and then somebody paraphrases their paraphrase and then somebody else paraphrases that paraphrase in order to see how how similar each of the paraphrases uh, is to the original uh, to the original paragraph okay and so so the point being we really try to not only help them to um, you know, have practice in paraphrasing, but even break it down further into steps that that teach them what paraphrasing actually is. It's taking words to change them. And then we don't, I didn't draw attention to it, but it's actually also involving taking uh, sentence structure and changing that around, right? Because you don't want to have the sentence structure remain the same, just change a few words. That still uh, smells a little bit like like plagiarism. So, what we uh, then <clears throat> move on to do is to help them to understand summarizing. So if you can get paraphrasing, then, then probably you're going to have a little bit better grasp of, of what summarizing is. So paraphrasing is taking a paragraph, putting it all into uh, your words, your sentence structure. And then we come to uh, summarizing, which is actually a little bit more of you know, digesting the main idea and putting that down. And so we have, again, a video of Tom and Latasha 
talking about summarizing. This video is one where Daryl comes and tells Tom about a movie that he's seen and he just takes forever with the movie. He, he sort of paraphrases a movie, but Tom is not interested in a paraphrase of the movie. And so then I come along and just say, look, Tom, here is the gist, the basic idea of this movie in about three sentences, maybe even less, okay? And so summarizing is seen to be an essential skill in helping uh, your friends understand movie plots to book, you know, storylines, etc. And so we then give our students an opportunity to, to look at longer texts, as you see here, uh, read them and then come up with what is the main idea in one or two sentences okay and so that is the basic concept of of this particular lesson number five okay and so as you can see we've staged it uh we've told them that they need to in a paraphrase come up with antonyms synonyms changing word structure in order to rewrite a paragraph, well then now we're using similar skill in helping the students to summarize a paragraph. In other words, try to read it and be able to identify what is the main idea, looking for thematic words, okay, looking for things that are repeated and then writing that down in a sentence or, or two, okay. And you can even see from the, the next class that we have session number five um, that we are trying to fulfill these outcomes and doing it that way. So, but, you know, it seems to be a very nicely laid out, you know, few lessons here. And it, it is, okay. But I would say um, that sometimes you realize that the students still need something else, you know. And in fact, I was talking with my teachers last week and we discovered the reality that we did not have an example of something that we wanted them to do. Okay, so we have examples of paraphrases, we have examples of summaries, but as you can see from looking at unit three, okay, we are asking our students to, you know, to do a presentation. Well, um, maybe if I could give you just a little bit of background uh, in terms of an overall uh, flow of this class. Okay, so in this first unit, they're working on summarizing, paraphrasing, synthesizing. Everything is very well staged. We have a test that comes at the conclusion of unit one, okay? And this test tests them over their comprehension and ability to employ the skills in that unit, okay? Then we come to unit two, and we're adding to that, all right? We're adding sources searching for sources, using um, linkers, as you see in 14, uh, introducing a for and against essay. Okay, so what we're trying to do here in this particular unit is, is we're adding to the knowledge that they gained in unit one by, uh, by showing them how to do an introduction, how to do a conclusion, how to use linkers. We're using topic sentences more and more in this particular unit. And finally, we have them turn in a for and against essay, all right? And this for and against essay is, again, the culmination of the conclusion to all of these particular lessons that they've done to that point. And um, I think it's in this lesson, we've written our own for and against essay. It's a beautifully written piece uh, by Lorraine and Emily and some other folks on our team because we wanted our students to have an example in front of them when they wrote their papers. And so you can see that example right here. Well, as I was just mentioning a little bit ago, we um, do not have, we, we found that there was a problem, okay? So when we come to unit three, uh, which again is the unit where they will give their presentations and do a question panel, we have no example of that, okay? So what I've been doing uh, over the past week or so is taking what I just showed you from Lorraine's paper, and I've been putting that into a presentation format, okay? So taking her uh, topic sentences and uh, taking her theme and making a thesis uh, out of it, as you see here in Lesson 18, taking what she uh, said for and against and, and choosing a side and then writing some topic sentences for that. And so... 
Uh, you know, what I want to kind of draw out for you is this, that even after you have this beautifully constructed semester's worth of work, there still might be some deficiencies. And so, again, you're trying to, um, everything you're doing, you're trying to drive toward the com toward the students fulfilling these learning outcomes, okay? So if there is something that's missing, something that keeps them from being, a, from being able to fulfill these outcomes, you need to fill in that space for them. You need to fill in that knowledge gap for them and help them to uh, understand what it is that, that, you know, in a more exact way that, that you want. And so in this particular situation, we want them to do a presentation, but then we haven't given them any example of taking a for and against paper, the one that we did in unit two, okay, and then we're going to use that here in unit three, but we haven't done that, all right? And so they, we can explain to them in class what a, to, what a thesis is. We can explain to them in class what topic sentences are, but in order for them to really have, a be, have the best understanding possible of how to fulfill their learning outcome, we need to give them an example. And so we're constantly tweaking, okay? That's kind of what I've been telling our team over the past, you know, five months is we, we have a beautiful course put together, I believe. We have great materials, but we need to tweak constantly because at the end of the day, what we want is for a clear understanding of how to fulfill these learning outcomes. And as, uh, as an old friend of mine used to say, if there's, if there's any kind of mist in the teacher's mind, there's going to be a fog in the student's mind. And so we need to continually drive toward a, a kind of clarity in, in how to fulfill these learning outcomes. And so I hope this has been helpful for you as I've walked through this to show you uh, how we take learning outcomes seriously and how we stage our classes and uh, how we provide examples of what we want the students to do and uh, in order for them to be able to fill these learning outcomes, please feel free to drop a note to me or, or stop me in the hallways. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And, uh, and John, I'm sure, would be able to, to do the same uh, for you. Thank you for your time and for listening to me. And I wish you all the best in the process of becoming a teacher.